Do you like the smell of two strokes? That's nasty. Or the sound of six cylinder motorcycles? Well, my buddy William does. William is a builder, a rider, a restorer, a historian, and he's got great taste in motorcycles. I met William when I joined the Antique Motorcycle Club of America, Las Vegas chapter. He immediately offered to evaluate one of my non-running bikes. Before I knew it, he went through the entire bike, taught me a lot about wrenching, and got it running great. Let's go have some fun and maybe learn a few things. So man, give me the toy. Okay, a lot of bikes to talk about. 1978 Benelli 750 SEI, say, which means six in Italian, six cylinder monster. De Tommaso made this bike back in 72 or 73, up to 78. Uh, took a Honda 500 4 and added two cylinders to it. And uh, Gia actually di designed the bike and he squared off the cylinder so it looked different from the Honda, but it's basically a Honda six cylinder. But they put on three Del Orto carburetors, uh, which is a significantly different. Uh, really nice Prembo brakes up front, twin disc, uh, which is at the time was kind of rare. A lot of Moto Guzzi parts uh, will actually fit on this bike. Uh, De Tommaso uh, wanted to have this be a Moto Guzzi, but he was convinced to make it into a Benelli. I didn't um, know that. I didn't know Moto Guzzi stuff would fit this bike. Yeah, because uh, De Tommaso back in the day, he owned both companies and he kind of like intermingled them to a point and swapped parts to a degree. I got these turn signals off eBay were Moto Guzzi turn signals, but the same part number. I bought this bike from the original owner. He, he bought it new in 1978. Uh, it needed quite a lot of work on it, um, so I, I went ahead and restored this bike to its present condition. Uh, it's really amazing. It's yeah, amazing. The green tank you don't see very much. Uh, usually the reds or the uh, whites or blacks or whatever, but uh, I, I really like that, that vintage look. And if you notice, it has a lot of angles on it rather than the rounded characteristics of uh, 1970s bikes. That was kind of a signature of the uh, 750 SEI. It's beautiful and I love the color also. Yeah, and actually these uh, exhaust nuts were painted black from the factory, but I was told by my Benelli guru that those are solid uh, uh, brass alloy. So I uh, dry blasted them and they came out like that. So I just kept them like that. Yeah, the br brass looks good to me, it's man. It's not original, but I sure like the way it looks, uh, you know? Uh, yeah. Yeah, no, it's, no it's a pretty, pretty solid machine all around. It's gorgeous. Yeah, really nice bike. Can't go wrong with that. <laughs> Benelli engine start, here we go. I did not want to talk over that one bit. And, and you know what, it, it, it sounds better in person than it's gonna sound in YouTube land, but, yeah. but man, that sounds good. Good. You said uh, no collector, just six in the one. That's and, it. And that's it. Oh. That's a real deal. Oh. <laughs> well, we have a 1975 Suzuki GT750. It has quite a moniker of names. Uh, the Water Buffalo in England, the Kettle in Australia, and, and other names. It's really a unique bike. Um, last of the big two-stroke uh, street bikes from Japan. So uh, it's water-cooled, unusual, three cylinders, um, and a two-stroke. So you've got the three oddities in the bike. But it's really a fantastic bike. It's a little heavy at 550 pounds, but the uh, engineering on this bike is phenomenal. Um, it's uh, touted as a grand touring bike. Uh, and that's really what it was designed for. But it's actually pretty fast for its heft and it handles surprisingly well once you get it going. Uh, it has a water temp gauge, which is also an usual feature, um, and a really good oil injection system. Uh, the engineering on this bike is phenomenal. The water pump is on the underside of the engine and it has a pipe that goes all the way through and connects to the water system. Uh, it was the first bike to come standard with the dual disc brakes up front. 
which was unique at the time. Most of these 1970s bikes only had one disc brake. Very reliable bike. Uh, somebody actually rode one of these in a recent iron butt ride, and I don't know how he made it through, but apparently the bike survived. He's more man than I am. <laughs> I would never do that on, on an old bike. But actually this bike is super reliable and uh, very unique, and uh, they're becoming more and more collectible. Uh, they weren't such a, a hit when they came out in the 70s because you had your choice of the fast Kawasaki's and some Honda 750's, but uh, this bike is gaining a lot of popularity amongst the vintage collectors now. The, the reliability can't be understated on this bike. All right, in it starts, Suzuki GT750. Water Buffalo. Yeah, there's four pipes, but three cylinders. Ah. The center cylinder has a Y division, and it goes into four. There we go, that's some smoke. There we go, that's what you want to see. <laughs> Poppity pop, there we go. I wonder why they outlawed two strokes. <laughs> yeah, you, you wonder, huh? <laughs> they don't want these in California, that's for damn sure. You know? <laughs> oh, I love it though. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my favorite bike of all the bikes. This is one of my uh, early restorations on this bike. It was a collaboration build with uh, a good friend of mine from Colorado Norton Works, uh, Matt Rambo, who's uh, renowned in the uh, Norton uh, high-end rebuilds. Uh, it, it's what they consider a resto mod. It was an original 1974 Norton Commando 850, uh, taken down to the frame, obviously. A lot of CNC, a lot of uh, upgrades. Uh, you'd spot the big Prembo brake up front, which is uh, kind of necessary to stop this beast. Uh, the big twin uh, flat slide carburetors, uh, all new electronic ignition, uh, 12 volt system, LED turn signals. I mean, it's a pretty endless list of this bike, uh, but it still retains the old flavor, old school ride of an old Norton with the pea shooter pipes. And interestingly enough, the pistons go up and down at the same time on this bike. So when it idle, it, uh, it kind of vibrates a lot. And some people say, well, why does this bike uh, turn around on its center stand on a slippery garage floor well it's just marking its territory of course you know <laughs> but it actually came with the uh, ice elastics which is a um, adjustable engine mounts front and rear uh, to kind of uh, cease some of that vibration and actually when you get it up to speed over two three thousand rpm it's actually pretty darn smooth um, this did not come with an electric start originally uh, my good friend Matt Rambo installed a uh, kind of a one-off prototype electric start on it, which makes it uh, significantly easier to start and uh, won't break your leg. It's not for the purest, of course, but once you ride this bike, it still has that old, uh, old flavor ride, the feel, the engine, the vibrations, the, uh, the speed. It's a great handling bike. Uh, and I actually had the, a frame powder coated to dove gray rather than the black, and I think that really sets off the tone. And I had a special painter in Vermont uh, do this. Uh, Bud Bedgore did this paint. And this is not decals, that's all hand done. It and it's an it's a older uh, restoration, like I say, but it took me uh, probably in the neighborhood of five to six years to get it to where it is. And it went to Colorado back and forth twice uh, to get some CNC work done. Um, and it, I just love it. It's my favorite bike of all these things. And it's reliable too. You know, it's just doggone reliable. Like I take this thing to New York and back and have no problems. Not that I would, but um, it's just, it doesn't leak oil either. It's got a, <laughs> a unique uh, venting system on it now where most of the British bikes will leak oil. They say when a British bike uh, isn't leaking oil, it's out of oil, but uh, not so with this particular bike. But the, the modern conveniences on this bike uh, are, are quite significant. There's things you can't even see in here. It's got a, a hydraulic clutch internal hydraulic clutch, which is very, very unique to this bike. So it's a two-finger clutch. Uh, it's got um, electronic speedometer with, a, with electric pickup back here. Uh, so a lot of this stuff is kind of hidden on the bike. So there's a lot going on internally on this machine that you're not going to be able to see, uh, but gives it its, its uh, unique resto mod appeal, if you will. And you know, those rims are not stock. Those are uh, 
uh, stainless steel with stainless steel spokes done by Buchanan's, which are the premier wheel builders of motorcycle wheels. And I, and I went with the stainless rather than zinc because they just simply last longer, look better, and are a lot stronger. Uh, kind of zero maintenance too. Yeah, it's not bad for an older restoration. Gorgeous. Yeah, nice bike. Okay, 74 Norton Commando 850 electric start. There we go. Twin pipes, two cylinders. Look at this baby vibrate. Look at that. Watch this though. <laughs> it's pretty wild, huh? There we go. It sounds even tougher than it looks. Oh yeah, it is. It is. It's a good running bike. Well, 1976 Honda 754. What can you say? These, these things are as common as can be. However, uh, they're gaining popularity and collectability. Uh, I got this bike from a gentleman who had it restored, but they did a lot of wrong things to it. So I had to do a lot of mechanical restorations on it as well as some small paintwork and chrome work but i've got it up to spec now it's a beautiful color alteris red uh, you don't see that very often and this bike was basically responsible for the demise of the the nortons because this is a uh, a five speed with the shift on the correct side and electric start whereas your nortons basically didn't have that and not until 1975 but by that time it was too late and uh, Norton couldn't keep up with the Japanese manufacturing. This was deemed the first super bike of the era in the, in the late 70s, uh, early 70s to late 70s. Uh, the first production was 1972 Sandcast, which is very collectible now, going for a significant amount of money. But any 754 uh, that's been restored uh, to this level is a joy to own. And it's, again, it's a super reliable bike. It, it's just, it's a wonderful machine just to ride around town. I go to Walmart on it all the time. Um, it's that good of a bike, you know, super, super reliable bike. It does garner some attention. Uh, like I say before, these weren't too popular to collect and now they're really coming back in vogue, you know. And uh, I'm gonna have this bike around for a while. I just, I just love the way it rides. Um, I put a smaller sprocket on the rear so it does a little bit more uh, speed on the expressway for me because I do like to go down Blue Diamond pretty fast on it and um, it's it's a great overall bike with the four pipes four cylinders four carbs I mean there's a lot of tuning difficulties with it but once you get it dialed in it pretty much stays put and you just get on it and ride it and it, it just runs all the time perfectly you, you do meet the nice people on Honda the boring Honda 754 how many of these have you heard start up Starts up. Sounds Single a lot overhead better cam. Than I yeah. Sounds good. There you go. Beautiful. Here we are. Okay. CBX. CBX, the this, big one. Yeah, this is the big one. This, this is the big one. This is how I think how I met you because you were on this bike and it, I was just drawn to it. It was. It was. I remember that. And it's hard not to be drawn to a bike like this. Um, I did not restore this bike. Um, a good friend of mine, Nils Minton, who is the uh, premier CBX builder in the country or in the world actually, took his time and, and built this up. It is a resto mod but um, only a CBX purist would know that. It um, has a lot of features on it that are not stock, but it's really like, it's a CBX that Honda should have built. This is a 1980 model. This is the last year for this style. After that, they went to a, um, what they call a ProLink, which was the one with the big fairing and the saddlebag on the back, and it was detuned a little bit. Uh, but they did add some nice features to it. Uh, this has a, a ProLink clutch, which is a lot better than the clutch that came with the 1980 model. It has a ProLink alternator, which is good. Uh, five row oil cooler, which is nice. The wheels are actually off a Honda CB um, 1100F, I believe. Uh, I do have the Comstars that uh, Nils gave me with it. But the dual disc and the swing arm is the square swing arm off the 1100F that's been shortened and modified to retain the original wheelbase of the bike. It uh, does have the Icon shocks in the back, which actually look pretty, uh, pretty stock, but it handles magnificently. Um, 
and it has really nice tires on it. A lot of problem with these mid-70s bikes or 1970s vintage Japanese bikes, they had terrible tires. And that was attributed to their bad handling characteristics. But you put good tires, good forks on these bikes, good handling suspension, you're going to have a bike that rides really well. This has um, got to be one of the nicest ones in the country, and you ride it. I ride this all the time. You ride everything. Yeah, I do. I actually do ride my bikes a lot. Uh, I, I am particularly drawn to this one becoming more and more one of my more favorite bikes, just for the fact of the smoothness. And it, if you think about it, you uh, have a twin cylinder, which will vibrate. A three cylinder, they can never get it right. A four cylinder is almost there, but uh, it's been scientifically proven that a six cylinder is um, the way to go for balance. Uh, you can actually balance a quarter on the on the engine case and it won't tip over on, on engine start. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, the If you notice, the engine is part of the, the frame. It has no down tube. And that was specifically designed uh, back in the day so that they could keep it uh, part of the whole structure. And if you notice, there's nothing on the end of the crankshaft. Uh, it's only two inches wider than the 754 because they put everything on a jack shaft, the alternator and clutch, inboard. I love chunky bikes. Yeah. I had a couple ZX11s okay. back in the day. Yeah. And this has that chunky look to it, which I guess it has to have being a six cylinder. It is chunky, Lo you know. I, I love it. It is, it is very, very chunky. Um, but yet it, it rides incredibly well as far as the handling. Uh, very smooth bike, smooth delivery, smooth power. There is so much going on that Nils Minton put on this bike that I can't thank him enough for. This headlight is from Germany. This bucket is one off because they all crack down here. Uh, gauge is magnificently restored. He did a wonderful job and I'm just proud to be able to be custodian of this bike. Um, it's like owning a Rembrandt if you will. Agreed. Uh, you can't get a better build on this. It has LED headlights, turn signals, brake lights for modern riding at night. Um, I'm not afraid to ride it at night. Um, I did have another one of these, but I sold it. It was a 79 black with a six pipes, and that sounded pretty much like a Formula One car. Uh, Although, this doesn't sound too shabby either. No, it doesn't you know? sound too shabby either. These no. sound tremendous. Yeah, an amazing bike, uh, an amazing build, and I'm just proud to own it. I don't blame you. Yeah. And hey, look at this glove box. It's kind of cool. 1980 model only came with the glove box. That's pretty cool. Okay, let's just see if this beast is gonna start up. Fuck, get the choke on it. There you go. This thing is smooth. Oh, by the way, Here, come over here, Chris. I want to show you something. Okay, we're going to turn it off. Put a nickel right here on the engine itself. Get that thing to stand up somehow. What are you going to do? Oh, I'm going to start it up with a nickel and see that it doesn't fall over. Okay, nickel's on there. No way. Yeah, you ready? No way. Here we go. Look at that. I'll even rev it a little bit. The nickel said <laughs> trying to fall off, but you it's not. You are kidding me. No! This thing is smooth. Singer, no way. Yeah, Singer ain't got nothing on this motor. No way. Yeah, look at that. No yeah, way. It's not glued on. No way. Yeah, pretty cool, huh? <laughs> I, I would have took a bet against that happening. Yeah, you can't beat the Honda 6. Wow. There's nothing like it. I knew these were smooth, but yeah. wow. Oh, yeah, it's, it's incredibly smooth. I know how rare this is. Okay, this starts the line of Kawasaki triples. Uh, this this is super rare. I picked this up at Meekum Auction a few years back. It was part of a uh, collection of a museum in Sweden. And um, a good friend of mine, Pierre Olsen, uh, had done the restoration on this bike. So I'm not responsible for the quality restoration. Very original example. First year production, Kawasaki triple, 1969, uh, H1500. Um, Really, I would consider this the original Widowmaker. Uh, erratic bike, uh, handles terrible, brakes are terrible. They developed a bike, they just want to do a quarter mile in uh, 
uh, 13 seconds or so. It has a 60 brake horsepower, uh, spindly frame, like I said, terrible handling, terrible brakes. Uh, this bike was well known for being just a, a quarter mile bike um, and nothing more. The drum brake on front, um, double shoe, it basically turns on the tail light. It's not good for stopping at all. Um, the, this particular bike is very rare because it has the under carburetor spark plug wires, the bridge port cylinders, as well as the window carbs, and of course the optional dealer installed factory Kawasaki Beehive turn signals and the mirror, which is original. So it's a fairly original example. It is a European model. You can tell by the extended fender on the rear. And I have the original gauges and kilometers, which I've saved. I've taken them off this bike. Uh, so I want to preserve those. Um, it's, it's not a very torquey bike and the uh, power band uh, starts at about 5,000. It comes on like a light switch. So it'll do wheelies uh, unnoticed and uh, it smokes and scares children and women. And in <laughs> other words, it's, it's perfect. <laughs> it's a very rare bike to have. And it's, it's not a great riding bike by no means, but if you just get on this thing from stoplight to stoplight now and then, uh, it'll get your adrenaline pumping, that's for sure. Yeah, it will. You know, and, the, and again, this had, Back in the day, it had the original Dunlop or Yokohama tires uh, that attributed to the terrible handling of the bike. But again, if you put good tires on it, um, it improves the handling significantly. And ironically, this is uh, electronic ignition back in 69 that was really rare. It has a CDI compact uh, discharge ignition, which is no points. Uh, it has a distributor like a car, which is kind of weird. But uh, at the time, that's a very modern uh, modern convenience for a, a motorcycle of this caliber. Kind of a raw bike, uh, sure is a lot of fun, but uh, I wouldn't want to take this thing seriously on a track. Yeah, it'll, it'll beat you up pretty good. Cool, cool yeah. bike, man. Cool bike, yeah. Uh, 1972 Kawasaki H2 750, what can you say? <laughs> this is the original first year production 750 H2 triple. Uh, pretty mean machine. It was the most powerful and the fastest of all the 750 triples. Uh, they made this bike all the way up to 1975, which you'll see in a minute. Um, this particular example has the optional dual disc brakes factory, which I put on there. Um, it's a kickstart only bike, has the uh, very rare uh, Bill Wurge's expansion chambers, but it comes with the original uh, pipes as well. Uh, this bike is rated at 74 horsepower and uh, it has a lot of low end torque for a, for a two stroke which was surprising on this bike but again like the H1 it's got a power band that'll snap snap your neck at about uh, four to five thousand rpm it comes on like a light switch uh, this bike was responsible for a lot of people uh, riding a bike that was much too powerful uh, engine and, and chassis and it injured a lot of people unfortunately There's, somebody always has a story about somebody who hurt themselves on this bike it's not so bad again if you put the good tires on it and know what to expect out of a bike like this uh, it, it's no electric start kickstart only uh, it, it's a very raw bike if you will um, again it has a cdi ignition system which is nice uh, early generation one of those it has uh, oil injection which is nice, so there's no pre-mix. All the 750s had that. Uh, three Makuni uh, round slide carburetors on there. Uh, pretty basic bike though. There's really nothing fancy. If you compare this to the Suzuki Water Buffalo, the engineering on the Suzuki is significantly better, but, but the raw dynamite power thrill ride of a bike, the H2 is, uh, can't be understated. Uh, one of my favorite bikes to ride and also one of the scariest bikes to ride. <laughs> <laughs> a legendary bike. My buddy came out of Vietnam and bought one of these bikes. Yeah. And then he rode it from Detroit to Colorado. Oh, really? Which is just amazing to me. Without a without a windscreen, without yeah. a screen over his his helmet. Yeah. Uh, that you know, that's when they made men real men. <laughs> they did that. They did that back in the days. I mean, some guys took this thing to uh, Woodstock and and beyond. You know, it's just amazing. 
how they rode these things. I mean, they're pretty reliable once you get them tuned right and, and you don't have to mess with them too much. If you notice, the early 72 has this tail cone section here, and then the later ones, they went to a more rounded uh, section. It just sets the 72 off apart from the other ones as well. Uh, the other ones are like detuned three horsepower, different oil pump and different cylinder porting. And uh, a lot of people say they're not as mean as this one, but that's like saying you have a Velociraptor missing a tooth, you know, you just, <laughs> you still don't want to get near the damn thing. You know what I mean? I know these are very violent to ride. They, they are. And, but you know, there's nothing like the smell of a two stroke. Uh, Agreed. Gas mileage on these was horrific. Even back in the 70s, people were complaining about the gas mileage on these. Most two strokes will get that, but then you put three cylinders in a row like that of, you know, 250 cc's each cylinder, it's going to suck your gas up rather quickly. So you always check your oil and your gas before you start one of these things up. Just good to know. Legendary bike. It is. It really is. Okay, 72 H2 Kawasaki startup. You got to move the foot peg out of the way. Put this on here, it's on here, gas is on. Give it a kick. That's nasty. Enough of that hullabaloo, huh? <laughs> this thing is just like a riding a chainsaw times three. What a thrill. What a ripper, man. <laughs> that total ripper, man. Oh. Chainsaw with two wheels. Another Kawasaki H2 750, 1974 H2B. Uh, a beautiful machine. A lot of people didn't buy this brown color, but I really like it in the sun. I think it's the best color. Um, called candy gold believe it or not it looks good i like it It really is a great looking bike and it's a great running bike too uh, and a riding bike it's significantly different from uh, that monster that's pretty raw uh, this one again was detuned just a little bit by three horsepower so it's only 71 horsepower uh, but it's still pretty darn fast and revs pretty good they put the um, steering damper on the left side uh, starting in 74 uh, to create less head shake because sometimes when you go over 100 miles an hour these bikes with their geometry they tend to do one of these and eject riders it's not a good feeling no and unfortunately when they made these the weld on the steering dampener sometimes would uh, vibrate loose and jam in the cylinder and then the steering head would get uh, stuck and off you go um, again it's a bike that's not to be taken lightly uh, it is a 750 kawasaki h2 no matter what people says about it it still has the power but it's, uh, it's a little better in some respects. The uh, starting is uh, on this left side. Some people call it a choke. It's a fuel enrichener actually. Um, but again, it has a CDI ignition on it, uh, kickstart only. Uh, and um, this will get your blood flowing if you really uh, want to get going stoplight to stoplight. Again, it's a, it's a beautiful example, and I didn't build this bike. This was done by a good friend of mine, uh, two builders actually, and they took their time, and uh, I couldn't resist buying one of their examples. I actually have two of them. This one is the same, from the same builders. It's the same bike as that. This is the last year they made the Kawasaki H2C. Uh, some people say it's the best looking bike. I agree with them. The elongated tank you'll see is the difference from the 74. And uh, they only made like 7,000 of these. Um, so it's kind of rare in that regard. Um, again, this build is just stunningly beautiful. It rides as good as it looks. And it's really my favorite H2 out of them all. Well, you said the other one is your favorite color. I'm here to tell you yeah. that, that you're wrong. Okay. Because you the, like the purple. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, a lot of people, they just gravitate towards the purple because mostly these h2s they only come in two colors every year in 75 they were this kind of red or purple so they don't sell them out a lot of reds although that's a stunning color color and the 74s they made in a green 
and the brown, which green outsold the brown like five to one. Uh, but I really like that brown color. But the purple 75, I think, is, is my most favorite. Its, it's looks are just stunning. Uh, the rideability of this bike is just perfect. Starts right up, uh, gives me no problems. And um, I'm not afraid to ride this bike around town all day long. It, uh, it just works fantastic. Uh, very nice to have the oil injection. But again, no warning, so if you run out of oil, so you gotta make sure you keep oil in the tank there at all times. Um, and these bikes require a little bit of a pre-flight before you go because they do vibrate significantly. So bolts tend to come loose a lot, <laughs> you know, so it, it doesn't hurt to take a wrench to them now and then and, and see what's loose on these bikes. You know, sometimes the mirrors will just start spinning around and stuff. And How many bolts do you lose from Detroit to Colorado? <laughs> quite a few. And, and, and actually, this side cover here uh, is held on by a nut. In the other years, they put a, a knob on there, which always vibrated loose, and you lost side cover frequently. And that, that happened to me in my 72, and I had to have that repaired to the tune of $100. So, again, you want to pre-flight these, these H2s, otherwise uh, things will come flying off them. But it's a great riding bike and, and fun to ride, too, and it doesn't smoke that much. Uh, amazingly. We'll, we'll focus on this bike first. Okay, so 74, 75, same, same engine, same thing. This one runs just as good as that one. So we can start them both, but let's just start one. Again, look peg out of the way. Uh, good engineering design there. Should be a one kick wonder, hopefully. That's stock pipes. A lot different than the chambers on the 72. Still sounds good. Yeah, it does. It, it runs fantastic. All Kawasaki triple, man. No smoke, no poke. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Why is that so much fun to do? It's so much fun. They, just they're, they're just, they're just so visceral. It's like you a, know, it's like a, being a little kid. I mean, it's just so starting much them fun. up is, is yeah, a lot of fun. Nah, 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 nah. Yeah, I know. Like, how, when we were kids, how often did we make that sound? You know, oh, we, we put the cars in the spokes, but this is the cars in the spokes for adults only. You know what I uh, mean? Yeah, because I, I had one of these in high school, my senior year, a black one, Cafe Racer. I'm so shocked that I'm alive, you know. That bike was way beyond my abilities, uh, even like it is today. But I have a little more understanding of how things work. So not so much when you're a teenage, you know. But I'm just reliving my youth, it looks like, obviously, with all these bikes. Here we go, last of the uh, Kawasaki's. Uh, iconic, 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 what can you say? 1973 Kawasaki Z1900. This started out as a 750 uh, back in the early 70s to compete with Honda 754. Uh, the 754 came out first, Kawasaki retooled, and they said, no, we got to make this a bigger bike. So they increased the CC to 903 CCs. And it's the first street bike with dual overhead cams, unless you bought the MV Agusta 750S, which was very limited production, very expensive. So very much of a breakthrough. It was such a secret project that uh, the head of Kawasaki uh, dubbed it the New York Stake. They couldn't even call it the Kawasaki 900 for fear that it would get out and Honda would one up, one up them again. Uh, so this bike uh, was the beginning of some of the big Kawasaki smooth bikes that went on in the KZ series and so on and so on. But this was the original one, 1973. They just simply called it the Z1. They made it through 1975, Z1A and B. Um, and ironically, this bike uh, came to me, it needed quite a lot of work, so I did a, a sympathetic restoration on it, a lot of mechanicals, some cosmetic. It, it had 1975 carburetors on it, which really bothered me. Ironically, a good buddy of mine, Mike Anderson, he had a uh, 1975 with 1973 carburetors on it, so you know where this went. Uh, I told him I would uh, restore both sets of carbs if we would just swap carbs, and that's what we did. So now both of our bikes, have the original set of carbs uh, that are proper for that year on the Kawasaki Z1. Uh, this bike is just, just such a pleasure to ride. It's got all the power you need all day long. Uh, it, it set records at Daytona uh, back in the day, an average speed of 100 and 
109 miles an hour, I think. Uh, it's a very fast 0 to 60 bike. You'll notice the dual overhead cams versus the single overhead cam Honda 750. Uh, the difference is pretty significant. Um, wasn't a lot of options for this bike. I, I believe they had a dual disc option, but I don't have that on this one. Um, comfortable bike, uh, well sorted bike, just a great bike to ride. You know? it, it's gorgeous. The standard in which you build these bikes and keep the bikes, yeah. I, I'm just blown away by. Yeah. You can come well, over you. my home and clean my bikes anytime <laughs> because it's amazing how yeah. you keep these bikes well you know they, they look good but they have to run good too that's more important they have to actually run really good which is which is the most important thing and and these 73s are, are going astronomical in price um i don't really know why because i really prefer the 75 it's a, i think it's a better looking bike but these 73s are, are getting uh, all the money right now i guess because it's the first year z1 um, now they did make a 750 version of this called the Z2, and that was for JDM, uh, Japan domestic market only. Uh, you can't even get those here. And there is going to be one this year at Mecham, which of course I got my eye on, uh, cause that's a unicorn of a bike, a 750, uh, Z2 bikes. But, uh, for now, I think this one will do just fine, you know? Okay. Uh, 73 Z1. Choke is on, fuel is on, key on. The Holy Grail bike. Here we go. Starts like butter. Little cold. Good running bike. get you there I mean these bikes really do take like a good five minutes to warm up oh at least you know at least especially these four cylinders the two strokes you can get on them right away but these four strokes there's a lot of moving parts that have to settle in and and get warmed up but I tell you what once it's warmed up it's just a one tick bike and off you go okay. so now we have a modern six cylinder yeah 1800 cc's of uh yeah Vol German Fury here we go push button start once we go, starts right up. Look at the window. Up and down. Modern That's, luxury. Yeah. Better put it down, otherwise you look, you know, pretty campy there. That sounds good. You I'm know what? It, it does. You I know, didn't but just. It. It's Something just like good. the Titanic. The Titanic's four stack was fake. Well, I think that these these two are fake, and not only the little, the center one works. Oh, uh, it looks cool. Well, yeah, it looks like six, but you know, hey, whatever. It's cool. Got that lock, but it's got central locking system on it. Let me unlock that. Come back here. Look at that little liner. <laughs> that is so German. It's got a little light and everything, you know. You can go on a trip with this yeah, it's baby. Got, yeah, Oleo struts. Oh yeah, yeah. This is quite a bike. I, I'm shocked at how good that sounds. Wow. And she's fast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you know what? If you dump this bike, uh, if you just lay it over, like just push it over, there's five thousand dollars of repair. Yeah, let's not do that easily. Yeah. So we're going to Mecham Auction this year. I'm looking forward to it. It's always fun, but I know yep. you are selling some of your bikes. I am, and, and the reason is I want to preference it with I don't have any room. I'm running out of space. I have to reclaim my courtyard, which is looking like a Bangladesh refugee camp of motorcycles and parts. So my wife has been very patient with me, and, and uh, I'm going to pay her back in spades and let her reclaim the courtyard. Anyway, what's going uh, to auction you sell this one. Yeah, Z1. I kind of bought it to sell um, because uh, I'm not emotionally attached to it. I really like the 75s, believe it or not, but everyone wants the 73. You know, these are high dollar bikes and it's a great example, great running bike. And, and I think I'm gonna do pretty good on this bike. Again, no, no, uh, no reserve. And it's on Saturday at the end of the January Mecham auction here at South Point in Las Vegas. 
And then the next bike is not going to be this one, but it's going to be this guy. This one? Uh, yeah, the 74H2B. Um, and the reason I bought this from uh, my good friend, uh, Steve, who's a great builder, and uh, his other associate, and, and they just do a great job on these bikes. But I have two of the same bikes, essentially, and if I had to pick one, I'm going to pick the Purple H2C. So this one is going to go over the block. And it, it's a perfect bike. There's nothing wrong. No scratches. Runs great. This is about as, as good an H2 as uh, you're going to see anywhere. I agree with that. Yeah. It's, and if you look, look at right in the hub, you see these little plastic things here? Steve even put those in there, which they don't make anymore hardly. And those are pretty expensive. That's how detailed this particular h2 is it's fabulous machine uh the next one that's going to auction believe it or not is the 69 uh, kawasaki h1500 i've had this bike for a while i i great bike i just don't ride it a lot you know um and uh it's in high demand right now so i should sell it while the the demand is high uh, I'll probably regret it because it's a super rare bike. It's got the trifecta of rareness on it, uh, we explained earlier. Uh, so someone's going to get a great example bike. This was um, a great bike for me. I, I just don't ride it much. It's a 500cc. I like the big bores. But uh, this one's going across the block. And then the last one, uh, and this one's going to make you cry, Chris. I just know. I uh, know. But you can always buy it, the Vanelli six-cylinder. I'm going to have to sell something. Yeah, you are. This one's going to go across the block. Oh. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I hate to do it, but I'm out of room, and something has to go. And, you know, as unique and as much as I love this bike, I don't ride it a whole lot. Uh, it's it's a it's a great example. It's it's fully done. Uh, runs great. I can't say enough about how well this bike is um, sorted. Um, and they're they're uh, gaining a lot of popularity. These these says are becoming more rare. So if you find a good one, you should buy it. Uh, this is a particularly good one. It's a series two in this green, which you're not going to find uh, basically anywhere. Um, I love it, but it, it's going to go across the block. You know. Well, I just, I'll have to see how important my kidneys are to me because yeah, that's you what know, I might have to sell. Look at how cool these adjusters are on the rear shocks right here. Look at that. Isn't that something? It's very talented. Well, yeah, I know. Pretty darn cool, isn't it? This is in fantastic shape. Now, Chris, you know, I can always do some horse trading. You know, I can put on my horse trading hat and say, well, you know, you've got a particular Lamborghini. That's kind of yellow in color. We could talk about maybe a few of these bikes or maybe like all of them or something like that. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Um, no. Maybe. Yeah. Well, I mean, if it's no reserve, so if it doesn't catch the price and you just happen to be there on Saturday, you know, uh, not only would you get this bike, but you would get 24 hour on-call mechanic service too. There we go. You know, I didn't think of that. Yeah. You know, you're going to get I didn't say free service. I just, <laughs> I just said mechanic service, you know. Yeah, These I, aren't I, the easiest to work on. I didn't think know. of that. And you know what? I am going to be with you there on Saturday. I'm, uh, you okay. know, all right. I'm not going to let you go through that alone. Yeah, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be drying my tears with $100 bills. Yeah. You know, that's for sure. <laughs> but yeah, that one's going across the block. If anyone wants a really good example, Benelli say, uh, that would be the one to get. And they don't come up very often. They never come up. <laughs> they never come up. <laughs> they just never come up. So here's, here's an opportunity for someone to get a, a really good running example of a Benelli say. I want to thank you for doing this video for me. Yeah. I want to thank you for being my friend and helping me out on, oh, uh, my, pleasure. on, my, on my bikes. My uh, pleasure. When I, when I joined the Vintage Club, uh, you're, you're one of the guys who have stepped up and kind of took me under your wing and have been really oh, well, good to me. thank you, Chris. So. I, I appreciate that. Well, and I, I want to thank you for doing this video. I've, I've never really done a chronicle of all my current inventory. Of course, I've had a much, many other bikes. They've, they've come and gone, but this is it for now. And when I whittle it down, those four bikes going to Mecham, I'm going to keep those bikes. Those are my stable bikes. That's going to pretty much stay with me, you know, unless something else really cool comes along, you know. It, it always happens. Like maybe that uh, Kawasaki 750Z2, perhaps, you know. There's always something. There's always, it's always another bike. As soon as you, you know? have room. Well, yeah, it's like, a, it's like a suitcase, no matter how big or small it is, you're gonna fill it up. 
right. and if I've got room in that garage or that whatever, you know, I'm going to probably fill it up. So, you know, my we'll man, see. we'll see what happens. Again, thanks, Chris, for doing the video and and, and filming all these and making a nice uh, chronicle documentary of these bikes because I do think it's important that people see these bikes. I don't I don't um, hide them. I ride them, and I, and you should too. Yeah, if you, you have do. A vintage bike. Yeah, get it get it running. Um, you know, if someone has a particular bike they want information on that's going across the block, uh, I'm sure Chris will put a contact information in there. Uh, I and will. I'll be happy to tell you what you need to know about the bikes. I will. The pleasure's all been mine. Yeah. Again, thanks. Thanks, Chris, for everything. Thank you. You bet.